Joe, aka Saul, versus Jesus. In Isaiah 28:18, God speaks of a people who have a covenant with SHL, typically translated as Sheol or the Great. The people falsely believe this covenant will protect them from the whip when it passes through. This means these covenant people believe their covenant with SHL gives them salvation and protection from God's wrath. Then these people whose prophets and leaders are apostate against God's law are at odds with what God describes as something he already laid as a cheap cornerstone in Zion. Isaiah 28:16. Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a precious cornerstone. This cornerstone is Christ, as Jesus Yeshua made clear in Luke 20:17. The Hebrew at issue here is Isaiah 28:15, SHL. This can be read as either Saul or Sheol. Why is that? The biblical Hebrew at issue is the word spelled SHL. Biblical Hebrew has no vowels. It is up to the reader to determine what Hebrew word that it represents. When rendered into English, the translator is obligated to explain alternatives that could fit the context. For context is what must be relied upon to determine what vowels one can infer belong to the letters SHL in Isaiah 28. How do we know the letters are the same? The name Saul is from the Hebrew word pronounced Shaul. It means asked or prayed in Hebrew. In a scholarly discussion of 1 Samuel, 28, when Saul, the anointed first king of Israel, goes to see the witch of Endor, the python priestess, it is mentioned parenthetically, Saul, whose name is spelled like SHL, as with the Hebrew name for Sheol, SHL. Thus, when one reads Isaiah 28, but knows also that Jesus cites this passage in Luke 20 as being about himself as the chief cornerstone, this tells us how Jesus would read this entire passage. It is clearly a contrast between a competing covenant from SHL versus a previously laid foundation established by Jesus Yeshua in Isaiah 28. The people are being misled to follow a covenant on terms set forth by SHL, which Isaiah says is built on lies. With SHL will lead them to death. And when the whip of judgment passes through, they will not be protected as they are assumed. Isaiah quotes Yahweh saying righteousness will be the plumb line, the measuring stick of salvation, not what SHL is selling. Here, verses 14 through 18, with Saul placed besides Sheol as an alternative translation. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Saul, Sheol, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. And I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line. And hail will sweep away the refuge of lies, and waters will overwhelm the shelter. Then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Saul, Sheol, will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. The message then would be those relying upon a covenant with Paul, Saul, not the previously renewed one by the chief cornerstone, Yeshua, have a false hope. God describes it as a covenant with death and taking refuge in lies. What does it mean, a refuge of lies? One possibility is this could mean the lies of translators who mistranslate and distort many passages to insulate us from hearing Paul's true horrible words, such as Paul defending lying, to advance the gospel in Romans 3-7. Paul there concludes it is no sin, but the NIV, without any warrant, adds words so it reads, some say, lying to advance the gospel is no sin. 
There are many more such passages that are altered or mistranslated to disguise Paul's true words. See, mistranslations to help Paul. More likely meaning of refuge of lies. However, I believe refuge of lies is Paul's own teaching from Isaiah 28 itself, ascribing something to it that it does not have. What if Isaiah means people put refuge in a lie? A false translation of Isaiah 28 itself invented solely by Paul to support his faith in facts doctrine for salvation. That would make the most sense as we shall see. The end. Note, a further relevant verse is Paul's humble claim to have laid the foundation of our faith. This appears at odds with Jesus being the chief cornerstone, hence that Jesus is the true founder of our faith. Quote, by the grace God has given me, I lay the foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. Unquote. 1 Corinthians 3.10, NIV. Isaiah's prophecy about 